Okay, so we're talking about stress versus burnout because most people are very familiar with stress. But what we want to also make sure to be aware of are the signs and symptoms of burnout because burnout is actually now a medical condition. It used to uh, not be it characterized that way. It used to just be a word that we would say, I'm burnt out, that kind of thing. But now it's actually a specific medical condition. And so we want to recognize when stress gets too far so that we can avoid sliding into the more physical and emotional state of burnout. Uh, burnout makes it really difficult to function and things like that. So we'll be talking about that. I am filling in for Suzanne uh, Kamfar, who is sick tonight. So um, she has put everything together today, and I'm sorry she can't be with us tonight. And I hope she's doing well. All right, so let's get started. As I mentioned, find that little chat button. If you have uh, any questions along the way, don't hesitate to pop it in there. All right. And also, if you'll just take a note, you'll see a little number pop up on the chat icon that shows that you have a message. Marcus has posted a evaluation form in there. If you guys can fill that out before you end the call tonight, we'd really appreciate your feedback so we can make these free webinars more helpful for you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we all, um, we all experienced sort of the everyday symptoms of stress. How many of you have any of these symptoms or have recognized any of these symptoms? You know, feeling tired, right? Feeling um, irritable or short tempered, having physical symptoms like headaches or muscle tension. Those sort of symptoms happen because whenever we are in that stressed place, our body goes into the fight or flight response, and that is what's actually preparing us to take action to run away from the old school perceived stress, which is a dangerous tiger, that sort of thing. So it makes some physical changes happen in our body to prepare us to go escape that danger. But unfortunately, if we're just sitting at our computer desk or standing there, we don't discharge that energy that our body has prepared for us and it gets stuck into our muscles and creates this tension, this um, exhaustion, irritability, headaches, th these sort of symptoms. So if you go to the doctor and you may maybe you have headaches or muscle pain, and your doctor says, well, we can't find any reason for that, you might wanna look and see if stress could be a possibility. Another thing that you might experience is gastrointestinal symptoms because that's also where um, that stress response, it shuts down our digestive response. It doesn't work as effectively, so it can contribute to those kind of symptoms as well. So sometimes it's not just the mental and emotional symptoms it's also the physical symptoms that we notice when we're feeling stressed so what is stress you know it's, like i said it's a, probably a word that we use all the time but it it is that sort of mental or emotional strain that we experience from demanding circumstances and then when we experience this on an ongoing basis that's when we have chronic stress and what we're going to talk about is when we're under periods of chronic stress for a long period of time, then that's when we can slide into those medical, like the medical um, situation of burnout. So um, just if you look at the example of what can contribute to stress, dealing with many things at the same time or lacking resources like support, especially over this past year, you can imagine how our society is is pretty much living in a stressful pace majority of the time so it's no wonder we're seeing in mental health at least we're seeing a very high uh, number of people that are experiencing chronic stress all right so, so we can look at stress on this spectrum i want to make sure everybody can see um okay all right so uh, let me see if I can hide this. I can't. There, I can. So this curve here just kind of shows you this sort of cycle of stress, right? So it is 
appropriate, we want to have some stress, some stress gets us motivated. So let's say you have a deadline and then you have that sort of last minute, ah, that's positive stress that gets you motivated to get your job, get the task done. Um, we can get into this little comfort zone when we have no stress, you know, here, then it's almost like we're sliding into a, a depression or a lack of motivation. So some stress in this zone here is pretty good. But when we hit this hump, we want to be aware of what those warning signs are before we hit this hump. But once we do, then we're going to go into a state of unhealthy stress. And that can eventually contribute to physical ill health and then collapse. So really, when we're talking about burnout, we're actually falling into a state of collapse in our nervous system. So let's talk about, um, I want to hear from you and I'm going to read some um, responses. So please share, share your thoughts. But um, what are some of the signs, the warning signs that let you know that you are hitting this hump? So some of the things here I have listed interrupted sleep patterns. So that's, for example, you can't fall asleep because your mind won't stop, you know, thinking about all the stuff from the day, for example, or even if you're just thinking, oh, I didn't do this or, oh, I need to do this tomorrow. You know, just having those kind of thoughts. It doesn't have to necessarily feel like an anxious thought. Or maybe you're waking up at three o'clock in the morning and then you can't fall back asleep. That's an example of interrupted sleep patterns. And that's really common when we're stressed. Um, so sleep hygiene is something that we're going to want to pay attention to, and we can talk about that. Stress eating. So stress eating could be as simple as um, maybe you're not always eating crunchy foods, but now you're you're noticing that you're craving salty or crunchy foods more often. Um, then that's the sign that you're getting close to that hump there, right? Tension in your back, shoulders, and jaw. This is where we carry the stress tension. So when we have um, aches and pains in other parts of our body, that's that can be from, you know, anger, all different emotions, we can carry that in our body, but particularly the back, the shoulders and the jaw, that's where we carry our stress. So a little tip if you do um, feel stressed is to just massage your jaw muscle, just really gently, just like this, just massage your jaw muscle. And that can kind of help release that tension. And if you do find that you're craving crunchy foods, like you are stress eating and you're craving crunchy foods, then that um, rather than eating, rubbing your jaw, it might just be that your jaw needs to kind of release that tension. So you might try that first and see if that helps. So I'd love to I'd love to hear from some of you. What what are some signs that you're about to hit that hump, that stress is too much? Anybody have anything that you can pop into the chat? How do you know that you're getting too stressed? Irritability, of course, is another one. Um, like you may, you know, road rage, things like that. You know, I'm sure you've heard of, yeah, stress eating, yeah. It's a common one, stress. And so the crunchy is a sign that you have more of the tension and the um, craving the creamy or um, ice cream or carbs, things like that is more, more I need comfort. And that might indicate that you need more support. Sweets, yeah, that might need, mean I need more support in my life. Um, you know, someone put here, I becoming confused. That's a really good example of an emotion. And, and it's literally because your nervous system going into fight or flight mode has taken that prefrontal cortex offline. It's not working as effectively the part that you're, that's responsible for decision making and problem solving. So that's a really good example of physically what happens in our body. Um, I love this one. I become very direct in my communication. I get that. I totally get that. It's almost like there's not enough time or space to put in all the fluffy. And um, then that can contribute to more stress because as she says, it comes off as angry, abrupt, and unapproachable when you're just trying to, I'm sure, get things done and move on. Um, and then that can certainly create more um, stress. So yes, the recording will be available for later. Um, it, like I said, if you have questions, anything that you want to make sure I address tonight, please post that in the chat as well. 
um, so I can also make sure I answer any questions that you have. Um, another example, I know I'm getting too stressed when I get home from work and I can't accomplish anything on my to-do list. Yes, because that sounds like I'm feeling too tired and I can't, I can't really, I don't have the energy, both cognitively, that could be part of it, and also um, physically. And those are your body and your um, your brain saying, yeah, it's too much. I'm overloaded. Yes, you can have a copy of the presentation. We will send that actually out, out when we send out the recording. So thank you guys so much for, for asking questions and participating. It's very helpful. All right, great. Okay, so um, we want to... We want to have a little bit of stress. We just don't want to have too, too much stress. So a little bit of stress, like I said, it motivates us to move forward and it can help us to make decisions. You know, um, I don't know if you've ever had a choice between two things and you can think about it and think about it. But once it gets close to a deadline, all of a sudden it, it might seem like, OK, it's clear. I really need to do this. And it might just be that you didn't want to let go of the other option. But once we feel that a little bit of that stress, it can help us to, to move forward. So we do want to have a little bit of that. Um, what's happening when we're in a stress state for too long is, you know, and some people are saying I'm too tired to do things or, or that sort of thing. It's because our body can't return to its relaxed state when the stressor is removed. Um, like when we get home or, you know, away from work, maybe if that's where the stress is. Our body cannot go back to that relaxed state. It's really hard for our body to do that. And that's when we're sort of crossing that bridge into something that is more unhealthy for us physically and emotionally. So, um, you know, you, you're probably aware of all of the new uh, things that cause stress. Um, but here are some of the really big ones. Um, the things that are on the negative changes list, these are considered um obviously these are considered like top stressors these are the top stressors that people experience on a scale of one to a hundred let's say you know job loss financial stress death illness divorce natural disaster pandemic and these are actually for some people big stressors and for some people they even cross over into the the area of traumatic stress and that really could impact our nervous system in um, a powerful way. So these are these are some of the big time ones. So even if you're not aware of your, if you're stressed in that moment, um, it's really good idea to get some support or if you're dealing, if you're going through any of these types of things because it's such a um, major stress. But there are some things that are stressful that we might not recognize, like positive changes. Um, buying a new home can be very exciting, but then that can create. A whole new world of stress right having a baby planning a wedding changing your job even if you're changing your job to something positive getting a new puppy so essentially whenever we have change in our life even though we want change and change is positive it does create stress it creates uh, more work change in a routine things that we need to get adjusted to so it does create more stress so some of you may be dealing with that and some maybe not but just to be aware of all the different things that can create stress in our lives. So um, here are some more acute physical effects of stress, things that are in the moment, sweating. And of course you can think sweaty palms is like that example, right? You know, um, g going out and meeting a new person. Um, nausea, like I said, it does, it really does have a, a strong impact on the gastrointestinal system for a lot of people, not everybody, but certainly for a lot of people. So there's things like acid reflux, frequent bathroom use, nausea, even constipation could be one. Um, all of those sort of like gastrointestinal symptoms could be acute symptoms of stress. We already talked about clenching your jaw. And I, you know, like I said, I really encourage you to to massage your jaw, I think that can make a big difference. But the headaches and um, muscle tension, those are also signs of that physical, uh, your fight or flight nervous system has been activated, but then that energy didn't get discharged. And so that creates uh, physical you know, symptoms as well. Fast heartbeat, sometimes that can feel real scary if you're experiencing the the sweatiness or shallow breathing even dizziness could be a symptom there 
and the fast heartbeat, sometimes people worry that there's something wrong with them. So it's important to recognize that that could just be a sign of stress or anxiety of the situation and not necessarily a physical um, medical concern, something to be concerned about. And what you actually have a little bit of control over that by activating the relaxation response. And we can talk about how to do that later on. So some emotional side effects, losing focus. Again, when your body's uh, fight or flight system is activated, it's kind of like taking your brain, the, the thinking part of your brain, it's turned down a little bit. So your mind is not as clear. You might not have as good of a focus. You might um, find that you're reading the same sentence over and over and over. Or like, why is it taking me so long to read this? Or I can't write. I can't think straight to write something. Things like that. And that's because you're when we're in that danger zone, thinking is not as a big of a biological priority as running away from, let's say, a tiger trying to eat you, right? So it's sort of trying to conserve your resources into running away from danger. Again, we're sitting at our computers or in modern life and you know, that's not the situation. So we have these negative side effects. All right. So um, other ways that stress can affect you is it can make it difficult to, difficult to control your emotions. Maybe, you know, you're snapping at somebody and, and not realizing it or feeling more negative than usual. So you might be interpreting a situation with a friend, like maybe a friend didn't text you. And you might feel more upset than usual or um, interpret it more negatively than you might normally. Obviously, you're aware it promotes disease. It can affect your relationships. Um, you know, certainly irritability, things like that affects your health. And it can it can contribute to weight gain, even if you're not necessarily stress eating. And that's simply because you know, if you think about your body is in a state of trying to preserve survival, then it's not going to be at the same time trying to, you know, lose weight or maintain your weight. It's trying to focus on survival. So other normal processes that happen in our body are what, what we would say down regulated, meaning they're slowed down or they're not working at their prime. So you can have side effects that um, even though you haven't necessarily changed some of your other habits. Um, I think everybody kind of knows some unhealthy ways to deal with stress. So let's see, why is this blank here? Oh, here. So we're gonna watch a little video. Oops. Oh, there we go. Oh, I guess we're gonna watch an ad first. I made you to okay. do today i want to start today with a breathing exercise everybody up for that yes. everybody take a deep breath in big breath good and then breathe out through your mouth <sighs> someone had garlic but that's okay <laughs> wonderful doesn't that feel good doesn't that feel good we forget to breathe sometimes and i think today is very important i want to remind everybody it's national stress awareness month in case you're not aware enough of your stress all month long, you're supposed to take all the stress you have, your job stress, your money stress, your life stress, and then you just eat. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You drink is what you do. No, I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding again. You smoke is what you do. No, no, no. You gamble is what you do. I could go on and on. No, there are better ways to deal with your stress. I've talked about them before. You can meditate. You can exercise. You can come here. I'm a delight. You know? I just read a survey that said more than half of all Americans deal with stress by shopping. How many people do that? How many people say the survey was right. That was about half of you. 
And you know, it's, I think it's a good idea because you get to wander around a big mall and you let yourself get distracted by everything that's in there. And it's a good feeling to buy new things because when you look good, you feel good. And then you walk out of the mall and you're feeling all accomplished and triumphant until you realize where you parked your car. You have no <laughs> idea completely forgot where you parked your car, so you have to wander around until you find your car, and then you finally get to your car, and your kid is screaming, your feet hurt by that time, and, and then you finally find your car, but you, you, now you can't find your keys. So you're thinking maybe you threw them in the shopping bag. So then you bend down to dig through the shopping bag. That's when you get stabbed in your upper thigh region, because your keys aren't in the shopping bag, they're in your pocket. So then you go to pick up the bag, which is now soaking wet at the bottom because you put it in a puddle. It's not even raining. You know what that is? It's soda because someone put a cup down next to your car. And when you bent down, you kicked it with your foot. And now there's soda all over. The new blouse that you just bought is in that bag, which has a stain all over it. And you want to go back and return it, but you don't have the receipt because guess where that is? You ate it. That's how hungry you were when you were shopping. To relieve your stress, you thought it was a piece of taffy that you found in your purse. You thought that would tie you over till dinner, but you're so high from all the perfume people that are spraying you as you're going through. So you just ate the receipt whole. You just swallowed it. So now you have a stomach ache and you have a bruised thigh and a dirty shirt and you get home, you have to make dinner because it's taco night and ain't nobody else gonna do it. So I can see why people shop to relieve stress, but if you ask me, I have a different method to deal with stress and it is called dancing. Mm. All right, so I just want to check in and see, could everybody just post one word? How are you feeling right now? Just having listened to Ellen there um, talk about being stressed out. Just what's a one word about how you feel right now in this moment? If you can post that in the chat, that would be great. <laughs> I love that, Christine. <laughs> oh, we've all been there, huh? Anybody else? Uh, oh, yeah, good. <laughs> Smiling, uh huh. Scene, yeah. I love it. So, technically, Ellen was sharing about how, you know, she was being funny, but she was being real about stress and how things can just go from one thing to the next. And then it's just like, ah. But, you know, I really love the comments about being validated and being seen because yeah, we've all been there and it, it's, we can laugh at it, but it's also so true that things are, um, uh, that this is how it goes. And then also smiling. So a good way to shift out of whatever state that you're in is to go into the opposite state. So if you're feeling angry or you're feeling sad or stressed, you can um, switch by going, watching comedy, let's say, and going into the opposite emotion. And if you don't have time to watch comedy or cute cat videos or cute puppy videos as a stress relieving break during your day, um, simply just sitting there and turning up the corners of your, of your lips there and having a half smile can change your mood because our, our brain our face, I'm sorry, the muscles in our face are actually wired to parts of our nervous system and, and impact how we feel and impact our mood. So, you know, you might be upset and stressed, you know, upset at somebody and don't even realize that your brow is furrowed and that sort of thing. But watching something or engaging in something that is an opposite emotion or simply doing a little half smile can be a powerful way to shift your mood in that moment. So when we talk about stress management, we're not going to we're not really talking about making time for this big thing. We're talking about 30 seconds, a minute, 5 minutes every day here and there. And that's going to be the real powerful way of helping you cope with um, day to day stress because when I put up that first slide talked about, you know, our everyday lives this is just this is just a, almost our lifestyle nowadays is to have a stressful life and especially now that people are back in the office there's more traffic there's more getting from here to there 
Um, so depending, de regardless of the situation that we're in, our lifestyles are pretty stressful as it is. And then, you know, you, you step in the soda and then there you go. So um, I'd like to hear from you, what helps you? So if we're thinking about healthy ways to deal with stress as 30 seconds, five minutes, 10 minutes here and there every day, like in your day, what are some ways that you do that right now? What are some things that you do that help you when you're feeling tense or stressed in the moment? I'd love to kind of get some examples there. Oh, and I, I want to say one other thing about what Ellen said at the very end. She said dancing. And actually, that is a really good one because it, you know, remember I talked about how we're in that fight or flight mode. Our body is holding on. It's like it's sort of preparing to run away or to fight, literally. And so we're holding all that tension. And when in dancing moves everything out through your whole body. So that's really, um, dancing can be really great. Going for a walk, going for a walk is, is a really powerful one. Deep breathing. Yay. That's good. Getting outside breath and fresh air, disconnecting from technology. Yeah, those are really great. And how many of you have an opportunity to do that on a regular basis or I guess what I'm asking is how many of you know, like this what is what works for me versus um, I'm able to do this when I need to. Because sometimes it can be hard to get outside when we have deadlines or we have too many things or too many demands or or maybe stuck in a, in a certain space. It can sometimes be hard to do those things. Um, I really like this one, moving to a different space. Yes, the visual stimulation of being in a different room is incredibly helpful. You are a visual person, probably, um, as well. But changing your environment is a really powerful way to de-stress. So I call those brain breaks. So you're working, taking a brain break can just be stretching your arms overhead, walking around, walking you don't have to go for a actual walk, even though that is really ideal, but just simply like five minutes where you're walking around your house or literally walking around your house or walking around your office, going down the hall. Um, I, I switched from an office where the bathroom was right next to my office to where the bathroom was down the hall. And I noticed what a big difference that made in having to walk further away to go to the restroom and then come back, it actually really gave me that chance to have a brain break. Um, but taking a little brain break throughout your day is is a really helpful way to keep your keep your body um, out of the stress response. Uh, I made a pond in the front yard. Oh, wow, great to get out to force myself to get out. She loves she says she loves water. And giving herself permission to enjoy the fountain is very relaxing. I love that. So there's two things about what you said is, um, well, three things. You created something that you really enjoy. And that's what we're going more likely to do, right? So if it's something I feel like I have to do, like I should exercise. If I'm going to go for a walk, what's the point in five minutes? I should go for 30. Those are going to be things that don't work in the long term. But things that you really enjoy, things that that um, are easy to do, short and simple. I like to say, make your goal a five minute action and commit to whatever that five minute action is every day. And then let's say it could be five minutes or less. Those are gonna be things that you're more likely gonna to stick to. And then she also talked about water. Water is very peaceful. Notice I have water in my background. That's not legit. <laughs> I put that there for your guy, for, so you guys could see a little relaxation because water is very relaxing for a lot of people. And um, she also mentioned giving herself permission. And I really love that because a lot of times um, we have stories in our mind and that's going to be part of our stress management is to pay attention to what what our mindset is, but we might have stories like, well, there's too much. I don't, I don't have time. I have too much. I have to get back to, or they are, they need me or, or whatever that is. And just giving yourself permission to take care of yourself in a realistic way, something that's doable, set a five minute action, um, that you can do. 
I think giving yourself permission is a very important self-care skill. So thanks for sharing that. I love that. Um, so I want you to think about expressing your emotions, talking about it. Obviously, you can do that in counseling. You can do that with a friend. Um, t- there's research that shows, and this is very simple, but very doable, that simply naming your feelings actually allows you to tame it. So let's say you're feeling overwhelmed, whether it's anger or anxiety or stress or worry or fear or anything like that, simply naming it then helps your brain to then regulate it. And you can feel better just by naming it. So when you say, well, I, I, it, that really hurt my feelings when so-and-so blah, blah, blah. I'm feeling really sad right now. I'm feeling really defeated or really powerless. Just saying that, acknowledging it can then help you to feel better. So a lot of the things that I want you to think about that you could do on a daily basis, I want you to think of it as very simple. Like these are short, simple things. Um, And not necessarily, you know, making big lifestyle changes. Some people find that keeping a journal and writing things down is helpful. Some people are find it easier to talk, um, talking to a friend or a partner or to a therapist or someone else. All right, so we got, um, okay, so we're talking about stress. And before I move on, what I want, I, well, we'll do that later, I guess. We'll do that later, okay. All right, so now we're going to switch to stress and then burnout. So we we want to be really careful about burnout because burnout is um, stress in and of itself. We already discussed, you know, leads to physical and emotional symptoms, things like that. But once we move into burnout, now we're talking about this is a serious medical condition where it's it's much more difficult to kind of move back out and you're probably going to need more support. And so recognizing the symptoms of burnout is important so that you can get the support that you need. Burnout, it's almost like, so now we're not really in that fight or flight. We're almost in a more of a collapse place if you think about it, like I just don't care. I'm just not interested. I'm just not motivated. Everything feels difficult. Everything feels overwhelming. You know, it's sort of that sense of, um, you know, I used to I used to have this habit of washing my face before I go to bed, and now I just don't feel like doing it. And if you think about it, it's like, oh, I'm just talking about washing my face. But sometimes those tasks, those activities, just feel so overwhelming. And that those are the symptoms of burnout, that somebody has moved from chronic stress more than likely to a burnout state. Um, It it can look a lot like depression, but it is different from depression because of it's really the result of chronic stress. Some of the other feelings that are common to burnout are just feeling a lot of self-doubt, Um, you know, certainly you might be familiar with, uh, the phrase, the imposter syndrome, but this is almost like I'm a fraud. I can't believe I can't even wash my face. Let's say, how can I be doing this other stuff? You know, this, this strong feelings of self-doubt and starting questioning yourself, feelings of, um, inadequacy and feelings of shame are very, uh, powerful feelings here too. Just a lack of feeling lack, um, not motivated. It, um, is important to recognize feelings of shame for what they are. And that might be, I'm not good enough thoughts. If you're having thoughts, like I'm not good enough thoughts that are about yourself as a person, like I am instead of, um, I missed a deadline. I wish I didn't do that. I am a failure. So the second statement is going to be a statement that's more of a shame statement, like I am bad. So those kinds of thoughts, and that's where we you know, want to be pay attention to mindset, those kind of thoughts and those kind of feelings are going to make things a lot worse and lead to more turning inward. Because when we feel those um, feelings of inadequacy and shame, then biologically that emotion 
pulls us into our self and then we're less likely to reach out for help and it makes it a lot harder to reach out for help and then of course that cycle kind of gets deeper and deeper and deeper so i want you to pay attention not just to how you're thinking how you're feeling but also what are some of those thoughts that mindset that you might be telling yourself about the situation or about you as a person that can be unhelpful and creating more stress that's unnecessary and that unnecessary stress we call that suffering right because um it's it's pain because the situation is overwhelming that turns into suffering because of the negative relationship to yourself there so instead of having that approach we want to take a really compassionate approach to yourself um it makes sense that you're feeling this way because this is really hard right so taking that more compassionate approach to yourself it makes sense that you don't have the energy to wash your face it's not because you're a lazy person it's because you're really exhausted you're really tired you're really burnt out so we're using that skill of name it to tame it and then adding compassion with that versus shame so that we don't dig um or you know how they say turn a mountain into a mohill kind of situation right so uh let's let's keep talking about burnout so this is a state of emotional mental and physical exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress so I mean, the obvious thing, I think some of the obvious things are this past year or year and a half or however long it's been, all of the healthcare worker, people in healthcare, uh, disaster responders, teachers, um, people that are in professions that are high demand and low break. So like a teacher has little time to take a break or a healthcare worker oftentimes has little time to take a break. People that are in professions like that are more susceptible to burnout because of that. Um, the body is not really going into that relaxed state very frequently as all at all. And there's excessive and prolonged stress. So that is pretty much the condition that sets somebody up for burnout. Um, it is a long term process. And like I said, it's that physical fatigue. It's almost uh, like a sense of it feels too hard to lift my arm to wash the dishes or I can't get out of bed to exercise. It becomes a never ending cycle. A lot of times, as I mentioned earlier, people might confuse it with depression, but it really is burnout. It's also cognitive exhaustion where um, you might find that your mind is just foggy and you're forgetting things easily. I had a friend one time who was in that burnout state from excessive um, toxic work environment and she was constantly losing her keys. And that was a really clear sign to me that she had that cognitive exhaustion, just not just that detail of remembering where she put her keys was just too much. And so she was losing them. So um, there's the sense of ineffectiveness and that can come across in different ways. A cynicism, like what's the point? And lack of affect. And lack of affect is a fancy way of saying that you might feel numb or you might feel like you might, like if I said, how are you feeling? And you might just say, I don't know. I don't really feel anything or tired. You know, there's not really a strong emotion there. And so when, when we think about what's happening physically, is your body has gone from sort of our everyday um, relaxed nervous system state to a stressed fight or flight state to a more collapsed and fatigued i give up it's so, or like a freeze state so physically our body's kind of moved into this other nervous system that is is not really geared up to run away from danger or to fight danger but rather just to to freeze um, so that that's kind of what's happening in the body and that impacts physical, emotional, mental and all that sort of stuff. So I wonder if anybody can relate or has ever ex thinks they may have ever experienced any of these symptoms or signs of burnout. If you have, maybe post that in the chat and it's um, moodiness, impatience. Some of these are the stress things, reduced interest and commitments. So responsibilities like i just don't really feel like going um lo a lowered immunity to illness 
that can happen. And that sometimes what, what can happen is that we're in that fight or flight state long enough to get through the crisis. And then as soon as it's done, then the immune system collapses because we're kind of flooded with the uh, adrenaline and cortisol and, and those sorts of chemicals. And then as soon as we're done, the thing passes, then all of a sudden we get sick. And that's when we, when the body's just kind of collapsed and um, that immune system then is let go or it's not really functioning as well. So I know that when I had a major exam before my licensure, I remember the next day I got sick. So I was like, oh, no surprise there. <laughs> um, so not wanting to get out of bed. Yeah, definitely. That is that is definitely a, a, a sign that you're just feeling so exhausted and so fatigued that it's just hard to get going. It's hard to get that motivation, but also just that energy going. That's a good example. Feeling detached from previous involvement. That's another way of saying a, kind of that affect thing about feeling numb or not feeling anything. That sort of emotional detachment. That's another sign. Um, feeling unappreciated. Withdraw so the withdrawing is, um, like I said, it's just such a, a normal experience, but also so dangerous because what we really need is more support and more connection. Um, so someone shared, I'm in burnout now, couldn't fight off. Oh, I couldn't find off a couple of effect infections and was co and confused and disoriented. Yeah, definitely. Those are signs that the body is just not, uh, not working properly anymore. And that's that I'm sorry to hear that. That sounds really, really scary actually. Um, I hope that I hope they were able to help you out, but that does sound really scary and we can feel really scared that there's something physically wrong or it, you know, it could be, it is similar to depression. Um, but all of those things are happening because, um, it really is, uh, how our nervous system is responding to the situation. It's, I like to think of it as, you know, you're the, if you push the pedal to the metal too hard, the engine get, gets burnt. And it's kind of like that, you know, um, it's just, I can't, I can't go anymore out of gas. So what are some risk factors at work? Lack of support, lack of communication, lack of role responsibility and clarity, too much work, unfair treatment, unfair pay, not having enough time. So like I said, there's some professions that have more of a risk factor, but certainly this can happen in any profession and any situation. And then if you add our own internal things on top of it, it can make it worse. Like, so maybe there's fear, certainly in the pandemic, when things like that started, there might be fear that there's not other jobs to be had, or what if we get laid off? And so then, you know, these, these patterns kind of perpetuate and, and continue talking about the mindset, just for a minute, getting entangled in a mind frame that focuses on the negative or catastrophizing or minimizing, um, things like that. Those are kinds of things that you want to watch out for, uh, black and white mentality, perfectionism, lack of ability to consider resources. So sometimes um, we've seen that happen in natural disasters, for example, people that perf that do better from a mental health perspective than others are people that know how to access the resources. So whether that's, you know, shelter or um, FEMA or insurance or whatever, but regardless of socioeconomic status, people that know how to access those resources do better from a mental health perspective in disaster situations. So um, really watching out for asking yourself, if you don't know what I mean by black and white thinking, it's sort of like this or that, and that's it, right? So if you notice that you're having that sort of mentality, they're bad, or they don't support me, just sort of that um, all or nothing kind of thing, then recognize that that can also contribute to how you feel and contribute to the cycle. So we want to, um, let's see if it's this one. Well, 
actually in the next one we'll talk about well here what can i change and what can, and what can i um let go of what do i have control over and what do i not and sometimes how we think about a situation is also something that we can either have control over or not not all stressors necessarily lead to burnout it's just this um idea that if we are in a situation where there's chronic stress that's when it's a bigger risk factor so how do we eliminate stressors so you know there's a point on here eliminate as many stressors as you can how do you do that right how, you don't get rid of the new puppy you don't quit your job if you need the financial um what can you really do does anybody have any idea like how can you eliminate stressors or let go of things um, i'd love to hear any ideas that you guys have if you guys have any ideas because getting stuck in powerlessness that's a really dangerous place to be so what we want to do is think about i love this one micah says set better boundaries i absolutely love that right so not everything is an emergency whether it's work or whether it's people or relationships um in any situation in your life, right? Setting better boundaries uh, can be very hard to do, but certainly help to eliminate some of those stressors. Um, any other ideas? Of course, that, that actually setting boundaries covers a pretty broad range of things. Um, but anybody have any other ideas of how, how do you let go or eliminate stressors? And I'm asking that because I know a lot of times when we're in a situation where we're in a burnout situation, it feels like we don't have control. It feels like we can't do one thing at a time. I love that. Do one thing at a time. I love that. Mm -hmm. Step by step. And sometimes um, my task list can get very, very long. And so I like to do the one thing at a time, but I also like to filter it out so that I can only see one thing at a time. So I'm not even visually overwhelmed because just seeing it all visually overwhelms me and can create a feeling of stress. So even just filtering it and focusing on one thing at a time um, can be helpful. And then that one thing, it might be really big. Going back to that sort of five minute thing is breaking down a task into smaller and smaller tasks. Something that they found in research was simply scratching off something off your list increases or gives you a, a dopamine boost. So simply scratching it off your list is, is helping to make you feel good. So what you can do is break your tasks down into smaller tasks and then check them all off as you do them and look at your progress. Another thing that's important when we get stuck in negative cycles is that we can see, like I, I said earlier, focusing on the negatives, catastrophizing, things are really bad, they're not gonna get better, that sort of thing. But instead of what we wanna do is make sure to take time to notice and appreciate the good. So um, I have so much stuff on my plate. Oh, look, I accomplished these three things. So instead of saying, those three things are not enough because I have 20 things. Say, great job. I accomplished these three things. Just giving yourself that positive and that good can help you to feel better. That's part of that mindset. Um, another thing, it's easier for me to list what I expect of myself than have someone else look at it and remove what really isn't as important as make it out to be. Oh, I love that. So that is a really good strategy. So what she's saying is... Um, because we're hardest on ourselves mo in most cases. Um, what she's saying is having someone else take a look at the list and say, do you really, is that really important? Is that really important to do right now? I think that's what um, I'm, I'm understanding you to say. And then you can scratch things off that you thought you needed to do, but actually you can let go of. So that's really helpful is to get another perspective. Um, so she's having her significant other do that. You can have a counselor do that. You can have a friend, a coworker, some other person might be able to give you another perspective and say either that's maybe not a priority right now, or maybe that's something you can let go of. And it, if it's a problem, it'll show up and you can deal with it then. Um, know your stress threshold and pace yourself. Yes, definitely. And that kind of goes back to that little hump graph I was showing y'all earlier is that you can recognize when you're getting closer, 
right? You can so, sort of recognize you're starting to get more irritable. You're waking up. I know for me, one of my telltales that I'm getting close to that hump is I wait, start waking up at three o'clock in the morning. And that's when I know like, okay, that's, that's not going to work. Cause then once you're tired, it, you know, another source of stress is physical um, challenges. So if you're sick or tired is one dehydration, that is actually a source of stress. So um, making sure that your body is uh, well taken care of so that it can perform at the level that we are demanding of every day is also very important. So um, just knowing your threshold and pace yourself, I think that's really good. All right. So eliminating stressors and letting go of things that you can't uh, change. Think, think, I want you guys to think about that. And when you leave tonight or maybe tomorrow, look at everything that's creating stress in your life and see if there's anything that you can let go of and what you let go of. Maybe it's not something on your list. Maybe it's not a situation that you're in, but maybe it's just a mindset, like a mindset that, um, I can't do it. It's too hard. It's too much. They won't listen. When, whatever kind of mindset is not serving you, see if that's something that you can let go of or, or change if if there's nothing else or in addition to. So um, powerlessness and helplessness are very, very common feelings that we have when we're stressed or when we're burnt out. And for many people, those are feelings that go way back to earlier times in your life and they can almost be sort of a traumatic response. You know, um, in, when I was growing up, I felt powerless and I'm in a situation now where I'm feeling powerless. You can see how that can also then magnify the stress because it, it's also a familiar place and that can feel really threatening. So it's very important in a situation to look at, especially crisis, um, difficult situations that we've all been through is to look at what can I control? So my words, my effort, my actions, right? How I react, um, my mindset. And you might not necessarily feel like you can control these things in the moment because when we are emotionally dysregulated, which is what happens when we're stressed, it's a lot more difficult to actually then, you know, take a step back and to respond calmly, things like that. But when we add in a those little short 30 second to five minute self-care things, then it makes it a lot easier to have control over these, my words, my effort, my reactions, my actions, my mindset, right? Things will get better. Things will change. Things can change. I can change. Um, whatever that mindset might be, my behavior, my thoughts, right? So negative thoughts about yourself versus compassionate thoughts about yourself. Um, what I think, how I choose to feel. And all feelings are appropriate and normal. What we want to be careful of is when we get stuck in a negative feeling. That's when it's dangerous. And I talked about how you can change the way that you feel by change, you know, doing the opposite action. You can try that. Um, you can also change your attitude and see how that impacts how you feel. Like I mentioned earlier, you can try the little upturned smile and see if something like that helps. Sometimes it can be really hard to change or to feel like you have control over how you feel. Um, because actually our feelings, our emotions are automatic responses to situations, but it's the getting stuck in them. That's the problem. Not so much um, the emotion itself. So, um, what I choose to do right now, that is something that you have control over. Um, especially if you're feeling even to that feeling of feeling confused or disoriented that someone had mentioned earlier, that's a really good sign. I need to put this all away and take a step back. You know, thankful, you know, thankfully she did take care of herself in that moment. And that's really positive. And then making sure that you give yourself credit, right? So that was great. I did the right thing. I took care of myself. That's positive, right? So that's something else that you can control. I mean, I think we know some of these things that we can't control, what other people think, how they behave, 
et cetera, et cetera, the past. Um, and even if there's something about yourself that you're frustrated with, that maybe was something in the past, you can say, now I'm choosing to, instead of, instead of getting down on yourself over something you've done in the past or some choice that you've made that you're, that it's contributing to stress now, right? So you can also change right now, your thoughts and your attitude and your feelings about yourself. So what I'd want to hear from you, um, here's a few self-care strategies. We're talking about sleep hygiene, um, eating a healthy diet, exercise, etc. Let's see. Hmm. Living in the pre you know, uh, stress sometimes lives in the future. What is going to happen? What could happen versus what's going on right now? What do I have to appreciate or be grateful for? Connecting with loved ones. So everybody's self-care strategy. Like I said, I want you to focus on something that is simple and doable. Something that my recommendation is I want you to be thinking as I'm talking of one five minute action that you can commit to every day for the next two weeks. Cause that, what that does is it sort of helps to prime you to get into a habit. First of all, you're only going to um, do one thing, focus on one thing for five minutes every day for the next two weeks. And I want you to be thinking about what that might be. But we, we look at self-care from a variety of different perspectives, right? And people respond differently to different things. Some people, self-care, uh, self-care is essentially not, it's taking care of the physical body. So the physical body is not so exhausted, kind of like, you know, taking your vitamins, right? And then you don't, you're less susceptible to illness. It's kind of like that idea. And then it's also um, giving your body a place to take a mental or emotional break. So some people are physical, uh, going for a walk, being outside in nature, doing something sensory, uh, smelling a good candle, you know, aromatherapy, getting a massage, taking a hot bath, things like that are really effective. Some people are a little bit more intellectual and they like maybe to do a Sudoku puzzle or a crossword puzzle or read a book or something like that. They like that sort of intellectual break. Um, some people are more creative, so they might like to do a, a collage, you know, um, you could even just cut out pictures in a magazine and paste it together. And sometimes that can be a, just a, an act of creativity or organizing photos into a photo album from your phone. Um, doesn't have to be painting or drawing or anything like that. It can be a lot of different ways that you can be creative. Decorating your house, <laughs> organizing your house. Some people, so I said physical, sensory, um, intellectual, creative, and some people really the connection is the most, is the most powerful. So whether that's connecting with yourself through journaling or writing or connecting with others, talking, um, reaching out to loved ones, just not feeling alone. Um, I really like this quiet time, mindfulness, being thankful for at least three things that happened that day. I love that. That gratitude um, practice has been shown to be very powerful. And that quiet, that space, that kind of. So what I want you to think about, everybody's different. So there's a lot of different self-care strategies, but everybody is different. We're not so different from a physical standpoint. There are certain physical things that our body needs to function well and to fight off the, the impact of stress, but emotionally and um, mentally, the things that uh, allow us to get into a more relaxed state are very different. So I want to, I want to hear, get some ideas from you guys. So I really like the quiet time, the mindfulness. And I and also want you to think about, you might see um, something and that doesn't really fit for you. And that's because you're unique and we're all different. So um, I will mention the physical stuff really quickly. So, you know, they used to say like eight ounces of water, you know, eight, eight ounce glasses of water a day. And then other people say half your body weight in water a day. Regardless, dehydration is a source of stress for the body. 
your body can't think clearly and can't respond clearly. And then you're going to, you know, find that it, that has that ripple effect, right? So your five minute action that you take over two weeks could simply be to drink more water. So that's a physical thing. That's important. Sleep hygiene. Um, again, your body needs to be rested in order to respond more effectively to situations throughout the day, stress. So finding a way to have good sleep hygiene, what that means is going to bed at a time where you can fall asleep and have at least seven hours of sleep throughout the night um, is part of that. There's a whole, we could have a whole hour long webinar on if you're having difficulty sleeping, things that you can do to help that, but just you know, that's another topic. And if you need some help with that, we can help you with that because we have a lot of effective strategies, but getting enough sleep at night is certainly something to put at the top of your list. Um, paying attention to what you eat throughout the day, just nourishing your body is also important because that's what gives your body the energy to to move forward and you can just pay attention to when I have this type of food versus this type of food, how does my body feel? Do I have more energy, less energy? Do I feel more fatigued? Because sometimes when we have too many carbs, for example, then we can feel more tired. Um, whereas when we have less, not enough carbs, then we can have difficulty thinking and responding. So just notice how different things, um, how your body responds. So that physical self-care is super important. Um, this is something I'd like for us to all do really, you know, together just for a minute. Um, when we're stressed, what we're trying to do is find five minute brain break. Like I said, just get up, walk around, change your scenery, change your environment or breathe to, um, give yourself periods of time throughout your day that you are getting into a more relaxed state. So when you're breathing or deep breathing, what you're doing is you're trying to actually activate that relaxation response. So let's just take a breath, a break here. And I want you to put one hand on your belly and the other hand on your chest. And you want to focus on the hand on your belly. Take a deep breath from your belly and feel your belly sort of expand and silently count to four as you breathe in. And then you're going to hold it and count from one to seven. And then exhale a little bit longer. So what you're doing here is you're breathing in, holding it for a little bit longer and exhaling for even longer. And so for most people, this activates your relaxation response and you can feel calmer. So I think there was someone earlier who mentioned, you know, getting up and going into the other room, changing the environment. I'm visual as well. That I find that very effective. If it were me, it would be even better if I got up away from the computer, went into a different room, different environment, different scenery, even outside, ideally, and take three to five deep breaths. And that could be your five minute action for the next two weeks. I really, I want everybody to make a commitment to what your five minute action is going to be uh, before we wrap up. If you already have an idea, go ahead and post it in the chat, but simply um, taking a deep breath, activates that rel relaxation response. Now, some people have um, their nervous system is wired in such a way that that calm feeling can actually trigger something. And then it doesn't necessarily lead to you feeling more calm. So if that's the case, there's other things that you can also try. So changing temperature 
can be um, another way to activate some relaxation, to change. So what you're trying to do is change your body's physical state because stress impacts your whole body, your mind, your cognitive, your emotion, and your physical state. So um, what you could do is you could have, let's say, a cold, get a washcloth wet, put it in the freezer and have that cold washcloth, and then put that cold washcloth on your head you know, for a minute or two minutes or something like that and just hold it there. And what you're doing is you're changing your body's temperature and that can help. You're changing your body's physical state. So it's going to take you from the stress response to a more relaxation response. Another thing that you could do if um, you're finding breathing or something like that difficult to do is actually splash your face in cold water, like maybe um, have a sink or a bowl where you have cold water with maybe a few ice cubes even, and just sort of put your face in there and, and splash your face and kind of really, it's like a, a little shock to the system. But what that's going to do again is help your body to relax and change your state. So if your mood is too intense or it's just uh, the stress feels too intense, and that's a great way to just sort of change your body's physical state. Um, I'm trying to think of another thing. You can also put oranges in the freezer and um, freeze those and use those as like little stress balls and kind of squeeze that. Um, that can be really helpful. Oh, wow, there's a million little things that are coming to my mind now. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to hold off, and um, here's a well, I'll send you the uh, presentation so you'll have a couple of tips here, but we have an excellent blog post on our website. It's um, edinscounseling.com. That'll be in your email. Uh, but there is a, a really good blog post on what to do if you can't sleep or you have trouble sleeping. And there's a lot of great tips in there that you can try. And like I said, you can work with one of us even just briefly to help with your sleep um, patterns to help get that back on track because that is um, we have some effective methods it's cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia is actually what it's called but we can help you with that because i really believe like sleep is the foundation sleep is very very important for being able to fight off the impact of stress during the day someone had mentioned in the chat earlier about practicing gratitude and i think what she said is just having being thankful for at least three things that happened that day that's a great example of mindset it's a great example of um, practicing gratitude and again putting you in a more um, positive or neutral state versus that state of feeling um, less than or overwhelmed or inadequate um, depressed things like that so just taking the step of practicing gratitude or being thankful for three things that happened that day. If you have other people that you live with, you can make that a habit to do together. You can share that with one another. I think that's a really great way to either start or finish your day, um, especially around mealtime or even just kind of writing that in your journal or keeping a, a log on your notes on your phone and just typing that in. It reminds you that things aren't all bad. And that can make us feel a lot better. So, so when you think about self-care and when you think about managing your stress, again, so, because we want to prevent that burnout. Once you're in the burnout state, please get more support because that's what you really need is, to, is to more support. But what you want to think about are small daily actions that you can take because that's the best medicine is um, in terms of prevention. All right. So, um, could everybody just throw an idea in the chat of what you feel comfortable to committing to taking as your first step in self-care or stress management over the next two weeks? And it can be as simple as I'm going to drink more water. I'm going to go to bed 10 minutes earlier. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to get up and take a brain break, you know, and that means I'm just going to stretch, put my arms over my head, stretch my body. I'm just going to make the habit of like getting up maybe twice a day, setting alarm to do that. I'd love to kind of hear your ideas of what you guys have as to what you feel comfortable doing over the next couple of weeks to build that 
relaxation response into your daily activity. Um, anybody have some ideas or some thoughts? I remember keep it very simple. So remember, it doesn't need to take up a lot of time, but it, it is a commitment. It's a commitment to yourself. Um, if you want, you can add it to your calendar or if it's um, a habit, like take two breaks a day to breathe. I mean, you know, that's a habit in and of itself. You could set an alarm for that. Um, so we have someone here take 10, 15 minutes before I start my work day to be still to pray and to deep breathe. I love that. There's so much about how you start your day is how your day goes. So that it sounds like a really great habit. And if you don't have 15 minutes, you can take 10. If you don't have 10 minutes, you can take five. And remember, it's good enough. The point is, I want you to think about um, what is a simple action I can do every day to support myself. And it should be something that you feel good about, right? That you look forward to doing. So we have another one. I'm going to commit to taking a daily brain break. I love that. That's great. Um, we need that. And so what you could think about is what time might I do that? And I know for me, the afternoons are usually when I start to kind of slump down a little bit. So that's the most important time for me to get up, to stretch, to change my environment, walk around a little bit, just have that like five to 10 minute little brain break. And that makes a big difference in my energy level. So um, that is a great uh, commitment there. Any Anybody else have anything else you want to put out there? And if you don't want to put it out to the group, that's that's perfectly fine. But I definitely want you to think about how you might make that commitment to yourself. And um, keep it simple, start small, and that's how we build positive habits. And if you do recognize any of the symptoms that we talked about, especially the symptoms of um, burnout, then please reach out and get some support. We have, certainly we have, um, so here's a, another example, like I was saying, some people are intellectual, like the jigsaw puzzle, that's another um, activity, or knitting, that's another thing that some people find that is just really kind of helps take your mind off of everything, right? And that's a lot of it. Um, I like to organize cluttered things. I, I, this is something that I like to do when I feel stressed because then I, I feel less chaotic when things are more organized. And we already heard uh, some of you talked about setting boundaries, simplifying, prioritizing, saying no to things. So you guys have already shared a lot of that. Great job. Um, so what I was going to say is you can talk to a, a counselor but also you might even, if you're at that place of feeling burnt out, then you might even consider a skills group, like one of our DBT skills groups, because in that group, you're learning practical skills to help to deal with emotional overwhelm, interpersonal relationships, uh, things like that throughout that group process. So, and then you're also connecting with other people. So that can also be a great resource to consider if you are feeling burnt out or stressed is uh, learning some DBT skills, but certainly name it to tame it. So talking to someone, writing in a journal, talking to a friend, even uh, reaching out and finding support online, you know, maybe reconnecting with someone that way is also helpful. So let us know if how we can support you. We're happy to do a free 15 minute consultation and find out a little bit more about your situation and um, give you some feedback and some resources on options that might be a good fit for you, whether it's counseling or whether it's some other resource in the community, because we do have access to several other, other resources as well. So does anybody have any questions before I wrap up? I really appreciate you all being here tonight. Thank you so much for joining and sharing and participating. I really loved getting your insights and your examples. Those were really wonderful.
Thank you so much. Good night, everybody.